Uh, Stephen Bradley Wong, Stephen Wong. Nicholas Tong. Abigail Winchell. What? <laughs> Jonathan Rosales. So many Jonathans, I think it had to be one of them. Ashley Moore. Gino. Sin. Gino. Is there a Gino in here? David Pineda. David. Nicholas Bo. Dalton Pablo. Edmilson Reeves. <laughs> Was that? Sorry. This is us, but you don't know. Um, anybody that didn't get their test back? Okay, come up and see me and just tell me your name and I can bet you. Not necessarily. Oh yeah, it might be something else. But this next one that we have is supposed to be really easy. I haven't even done this one. He allows weight work. I'll take it. Okay. Um, it turns out they weren't as good as I thought they were when I started grading them. Um, so let me go over. I am not. I refuse to put a letter grade uh, to these things in terms of like a letter grade for a letter grade's sake or anything like that, because I don't want people thinking, you know, oh, you know. <coughs> But you'll kind of know where you stand after I do this. So, you'll see the scores are out of 60 points. Uh, I might change that for the next test just so I can have a little bit more leeway about point distributions and things like that. So that might change. Uh, going into this one. I didn't even calculate it. What was the highest okay. score? I'm not telling. No, the high score was a 55. That was the high score, 55 out of 60. Okay. All right. So here's the. Here's the way I see the grades, okay? 50 is great. 40 is good. 30 is okay. 25 is still sort of okay. <laughs> but not as okay as the 30, okay? 20, get some help. Less than 20, get more help. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So get more help. Get more help. Um, I, uh, there's a lot of things that were missed that shouldn't have been missed. And there's a lot of simple things that you can do to make sure that you don't miss these things in the future. Okay? Um, I'll just try to see where this goes with the other three tests that you take. I know that there was that day I missed, so we you know, got shortened up that. That probably cost about five points, an average of five points. But that still isn't you know, like the totality of what's going on here. This was also the first test you took from me, so there's all this kind of getting used to things. And the theoretical electricity part of this is not the easiest section to, to do well on. So there's lots of things. Um, the, those of you who, who really got down in here, where you're just like getting like less than 10, I mean, there's lots of grades that were less than 10. Um, <coughs> just work problems. Study group, do, you know, get together, you know, use the formulas, plug in the numbers, get the answers. There are things that I saw on there that were kind of surprising. And I'm going to go over a few of them, and this is another reason why I didn't like go into the test in too much detail because I didn't want to remember who did these things, okay? <laughs> who did these things, so I could forget who did them. So I, I forget who did them. Uh, there was one problem where uh, you, I asked you to calculate the charge density, and we had this uh, you, you had this formula for rho rho equals uh, Q over V. 
Okay, this was the second problem. Okay. Here's what some of you did with this. Okay? The Q was the Q was like so many microcoolers. Oh V. V equals K Q over R. And you calculated that. Okay? Do you see what happened? We okay. Those type of mistakes, those are the things you can clear up. And so when I give you the formula sheets, I am not telling you don't memorize the formulas. I want you to memorize them. I want you to have those formulas all memorized. All of them, okay? Got it? I want you to have them all memorized, but I want you to memorize them in terms of words, not in terms of the letters. Because the thing that you're, one of the things that you're responsible for is knowing what letters mean what? Because you're given the formulas. And you can't use this V for this V. And for those of you who asked, we did give you the volume of spheres, 4 thirds pi r cubed. That's volume there, it's not voltage. So that's a big, you see what I mean? You gotta know what, what is what. Because there's not, unless, if this were a Mandarin physics class, I would have enough characters I think it's like 3,000 or whatever it was, to represent each variable with a different thing. But we don't have it in here. We don't have that luxury. I mean, we even spill over into Greek and we spill over into other things. You know what these definitions are. And the other thing is definitions. Make sure your definitions. Just definitions of stuff. There's a difference between these two words. They are not the same thing. If I ask you for the force, you're calculating the force. If I ask you for the field, you're calculating the field. <coughs> calculating the field. Volume of spheres not on here. Hmm? Unless you wrote it on the board. I wrote it on the board. Oh, okay. But it's still fine. You could have guessed the volume of spheres. And I wrote it. Definitely not this thing. Yeah, oh yeah. Okay? So know the difference between these things. Okay? So that's the kind of thing that they're going to do going on. Okay? So just learn these definitions, understand some principles, and do that. I mean, otherwise than that, I just want to kind of like bury this away in a nice little nightmare. Hope you do better on the last three tests and go from there. Okay? Uh, if if the scores come up considerably on the last three tests, I will consider dropping this one. Okay? Or dropping one of the last three that you have. That's, that's, and, and, yeah, and, and and I always curb anyway. I mean, this is massive. If somebody put a gun to my head, I would be passing some of these people down in here, you know, giving you guys D's or something like that. You see what I mean? That's how, you know. But, you know, having it only be, you know, 60, that's why we take four of them. That's another reason why we take four of them. I mean, I don't like dropping tests because it means you kind of drop material, but, you know, things happen. We still learned it. Sort of. It, it was still okay, sort of. So, yeah. so, sort of. Sort of. Let's just know what we need to work on. Mm -hmm. It lets us know what we need to work on more because if we drop that certain test, we're like, okay, that's the one I need to work on. We can pay attention more for that. Yeah. The final. For the final, the, yeah, that's the that's the like, yes, that that is true too. So you know what to do because the there is a comprehensive part of the final. Yes. Are your tests generally four questions? Yeah. With like different parts. Yeah, four four questions with different parts. The other the sample test, the way the sample test worked out, it was the what I did was I broke up that last question into three conceptual questions. But it was still four questions. It was still four kind of parts there. Okay. That's generally the way they go. Okay. Yes? Can you put up on that another sample test? Can you put the answers to it up? Sure. But the other thing you want to pay attention to is are, you know, any kind of examples I do in class, simpler homework problems and things like that. And within your study groups, you should have been able to scarf up the answers to that you know, test. But I will be try to put you know, the answers up there as well. For you. But make sure you're, you're not just studying those, you see what I mean, those questions. Another big question that was missed on the first test, and here's how you're going to deal with all your vectors from now on in here, is what everybody, I'm going to, I'm going to stop teaching, I'm going to stop trying to teach you vectors as uh, giving you the formal thing like this. Uh, here's the formula on the formula sheet for the electric field. Uh, I, I even put it in terms of 
and four pi epsilon naught, so whatever. I'll just use k for now. So it's kq over r squared in the r hat direction. Okay. So from now on, I don't want you to do it this way. Okay. I want you to do it in much the same way as I would teach the 100 level course, who wouldn't understand what this is. Because apparently this confuses people. Because you're so used to trying to plug into a direct formula when this is a vector that points from the charge away from that charge. So it's easier conceptually if you just deal with this as the magnitude and then the direction separately. Magnitude and direction separately. And this is why your first problem has a big bunch of scribbles and everything. I was originally giving that a lot less points for people that mess this up. I was like, oh, that's fine. It's been that. I saw lots of people were messing it up. But that's one of the things that takes me so long is because I'll go through and I'll grade something. I thought, well, maybe I shouldn't have. So then I have to go back. And that have to change for everybody. And give me a big headache. You know, so. All right, so uh, for some of you, you had a positive charge here and a negative charge over here. Okay. And for the other way, it was the other way around. You know, negative charge here and positive charge here. Uh. Um, the thing is, is that I asked you for the electric field here in the middle. And if you did this, you plugged in the Q here. If you tried to use this thing, you plug in the Q here and you get a positive number. Plug in the Q here, you get a negative number. But that negative number, you know what I mean, would be in the negative R direction and it would be back to the positive R. That's the way that would work if you're trying to use this particular formula. It's easier conceptually just to deal with the magnitudes, which are this, kq over r, and you just do absolute values, that's the magnitude, okay? And then you remember the rules for the direction and put the arrows physically on your diagram, okay? So this is how we're gonna deal with vectors from now on, okay? Just to make sure you don't get tripped up, I'm not gonna get fancy, okay? I apologize for getting fancy. I mean, this is a fancy way of doing it, but if it confuses you, then I want to go back to the, the standard way. And those of you who have to take 370, you will get this, so I don't have to worry about you. So anyway, the magnitude here. So it points away from the positive charge, so the E from the positive charge is going to point in this direction here. So I'll, put the, I'll call this A and B. Okay, so this is E, A. And then the E from B is going to point to the negative charge, and notice what they do, they add up. They add up together. So in between the charges, the electric field adds. The electric fields do not cancel out between those charges. Okay. Okay. What about B for that question? Hmm? The same question for B? Oh, fine. All right. Uh, I decreased the number of points on B so that I wouldn't have to count it so much because people were you know, either missing it or missing the explanation. And I really did need the explanation because anything else could be kind of, you know, memorized here. All right, so what happens is one of the two charges I chose to be larger than the other, okay? So in one case, I might have a plus 30 microcoulomb charge here and a minus 10 microcoulomb charge here, okay? So I've got a positive sign and I've got a negative sign. So the, quest the question I asked you about uh, basically takes into account three different regions, three different regions, or nowhere other than infinity where you put infinity in all the numbers, okay? So over here to the left of this, let's take a look, and this is what you should have done. If you take a look at this region over here, okay, the electric field from the three is gonna point away from that charge. So electric field from the three points away from it. The electric field from the one is going to point back toward it. So this is electric field from the one. So here they cancel out. In between the charges, it points away from the three and toward the one. So in between, in this region, those two electric fields add up. So this choice is automatically eliminated. That choice is automatically eliminated because they can't cancel out in between. Over here, let's see what we got. Well, we got E3 still pointing away from it. E1 is pointed toward it. Okay, so this one's canceled out. Canceled out. Now, the question is this. Here's where the thought process comes in. Okay, so that's why this is this more one of the more conceptual questions. You really have to think about it. You have to understand what's going on. These two might cancel out here. Okay? However, this is the larger charge, and I'm always closer to it. 
if I'm always closer to the larger charge, then this field will always be bigger than that one. Everybody see that? Because I'm always closer to the larger charge. So the larger charge, this E3, is always going to be bigger than E1 over in this region. So therefore, there will be no point where the E1 gets big enough to cancel out the E3. If you look over here, here we're closer to the smaller charge. So there's going to be regions here where E1 is bigger than E3, and in other regions where E1 is smaller than E3. Because you've got the two competing things. E3 is the bigger charge, but we're closer to the other one. So it's in this region that it can cancel out. So somewhere over here will be your E equals zero. Those are the type of, of high concept questions there. Okay. And I call them high concept questions. I don't expect all of you to get those kind of questions. Okay? I, those are the ones that really can think about this and really can understand this. Okay? If you're focusing on just getting your grade up to where it to get through, focus more on stuff like this. Because this is basic. This is the basic stuff here. This is the basic. Definitions, understand your formulas, understand the basic concepts. Okay? okay. All right. Let's go to a more happy All right, let's see. Uh, anybody have the diagram from last Wednesday? Yeah. <clears throat> I had, I, I remember this was a five volt uh, battery here. Yeah, then uh, two ohm. Two ohm resistor was up here? Yep. Two ohm resistors up here. Got a four ohm resistor right here. Treat them as two separate loops. Here, what you do is we don't really have any like equation for equivalent battery. There's no real equivalent battery. Though I can tell you, if you put two of them in series, they will either directly add if you put them in the same direction, or directly uh, subtract from each other if you put them in the opposite directions for your EMF sources. Uh, but other than that, there's no like parallel equation or anything like that for batteries. Because if I, yes, go ahead. Would they go in a, in a different path? Because the positive has to go to the negative, so when it goes over here, it's going to, can it go to the other side on 10? Well, it depends. It could. Curious. We, we don't know. We honestly don't know. Not, I don't know by looking at it. Uh, did it give enough resistance in this side? So I'm not sure which way the current goes. I'm not sure which way the stuff happens. So I'm not sure. So there's principles that we can use to figure this out. Okay? So the idea about a problem like this is uh, simpler versions of this problem, and get used to it, will have it where you're trying to solve for one of the uh, voltages or maybe one of the resistors. Okay? So there are simpler versions of this type of problem. But this is your standard problem. So all of you who are in electrical engineering, you're going to love this. How many of you have actually seen this type of problem before? Which class? Oh, they had it in high school. Okay, yeah. They tell you this in high school. Pretty good. Okay. Wow. Was it physics? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, then they'll, they taught it probably the way that I did. Engineers will teach you a couple shortcuts to use. I don't want to go there, okay? Because those shortcuts would only apply to certain circuits. So when you relearn this and you learn the shortcuts, you know, we're, I'm going to do the grind it out way. The grind it out way, okay? All right, so a couple of principles. The idea is that we are going to, we need to find out what the current is in each of these branches of the circuit. 
So our goal here, in this case, is to find, is when we analyze this circuit, is to figure out the currents. And I can choose the currents in any way that I want to. So I'm gonna choose this one to go, be coming out of the five volt battery, because that seems reasonable to me. I'm gonna choose a second current over here. I'm actually gonna call the I3, okay, because it's on this side, to be coming out of this one. And then just to be, uh, just to have it nice and flowy, I'm gonna choose I2 through that particular middle resistor. Those are the currents that I choose. Those are the currents that I choose, okay? Now as engineers, you're gonna learn you have a choice here. I could have chosen those currents any way I wanted to, and I can still solve for this thing. Um, for my 100B students, my 100 students, I actually tell them, give them the current choices. And on a test, I would give them to you too. I would tell you, this is the way that the currents are flowing, even though they might not be the way that you would choose them or the way that they would flow, okay? But as long as you're consistent with the principles and you're consistent with the ideas, the algebra will then take care of itself. The algebra is gonna take care of itself. So, first principle is conservation of charge, i.e. conservation of current, okay? Or literally, it, it actually is conservation of charge. And let me write charge here, because I'll go back to that in a minute. Okay? Okay. And by the way, the person that did this and came up with these rules were named, it was named Kirchhoff. Kirchhoff. K-I-R-C-H-H-O-F-F. I believe that. It has a double H in his name. These are his rules he came up with. So the conservation of charge here, which means that, which means that this happens. If I take any branch or any junction point, what we call a junction, where the two or more paths come together. So I have two junctions. I have a junction up here and a junction down here. So I have two junctions, one at the top and one at the bottom. Okay? So for those two junctions, Come up with a junction equation that relates the currents. And the principle is this. The current fl that flowing into any junction must equal the current that flows out of that junction. That's the principle. The current flowing into any junction is equal to the current that flows out of a junction. So if I look at the junction at the top, I could get an equation out of this. So let's take a look at the equation I get from junction A here at the top, okay? Point A here at the top. So from point A, what current is flowing into that junction? I1 plus I3, that's flowing into that junction. So I get I1 plus I3, and what's coming out of that junction? I1. I2 is coming out of it. Oh, there you go. So that's how we get our equation. You have to have as many of these junction equations to include all of your currents. Once you do, all the other equations you would could come up with for whatever junctions you use would be extra. Um, if I use junction B, what uh, current goes into that junction? I1 plus I2 goes in, what comes out? I2, I1. I1 plus I3. So notice you get the same equation. You get the same equation, whether you use junction A or junction B. Okay, so that's, that's the equation using the currents. Now we've got a principle that involves voltages. Voltages, okay? Let's say that I move around this loop, okay? So I go around that loop. And what I do around that loop is I am counting voltages. I am talking about voltage increases and voltage decreases. Yes? 
I don't. I pick them whichever way I wanted to. Or we'll, or we'll show them for you and tell you to work accordingly. As long as you're consistent, fine. Ah, it's tricky. Um, remember that the current in the 5 ohm resistor has to flow through this particular branch. It must be the same. Any series thing, the current must be the same. So what current flows through 5 ohms? What current flows through 5 ohms? This is a series part of the circuit. This 5 ohm resistor is on the same branch as that 10 volt battery and this 3 ohm resistor up here. Okay? See that? These are all on the same branch. So whatever current flows here has to flow here, has to flow there. So which of the three currents flows through that 5 ohm resistor? Go ahead. I need you to answer it. Yeah, I agree. Okay. There you go. It's the same one because of that. Okay? And the current over here, what, what about in this place? I didn't put anything here, but what about here? What current flows through this? It would be I1. Okay? So I'm asking why are we not labeling the 5 ohm as I4? Because it's the same current as I3. Oh, okay, okay. So okay. it's the same current. I've already labeled this current. Okay. So you only have to label it for each branch. Okay? okay. Alright, so. Next, we're going to take a look at the voltages, okay, as I go around this loop. And here I want to do voltage increases and voltage decreases. So I'm going to actually talk about the change of voltage from going or in going around the loop, okay? Well, remember how we talk about voltages. And we say voltage is a single value quantity. In other words, the voltage at any one location is the same as the voltage in that location. Okay? If I'm at base camp, right? If I'm at base camp here, right? And I talk about the elevation of the base camp, okay? And I leave the base camp and come back to it. What elevation am I at at the base camp? Same. Same. I don't change the elevation of the base camp just because I moved around. Okay? So here's point. Darn, I already used A and B. Uh, let me use um, C and D, I guess, right? So C and D. So I'm going to talk about, I'm going to start at point C, and I'm going to go around the loop of point D, and I'm looking at the voltages around that, okay? So I'm looking at the voltages, the voltage gains, and the voltage losses around that loop, okay? So here's what I'm looking for. And by the way, this is called the loop equation. So we've got the junction equation, and we've got a loop equation. Yes? Um, can you explain how it's the same point as C and D? C and D, yeah, I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to the same point. I'm going, back, I'm going in a loop. Oh. I'm going in a loop. You'll see how that works. You'll have, we'll have fun here, okay? And so now, while I could add up and subtract off the voltage, we'll tell you how to do that in a minute. I'm going to do the principle here. Here's the principle, okay? Loop equation. So I'm going to add up all my voltages around that thing, around the loop, okay? This is the way I like to write the equation. Some of the voltages around the loop. The sum of the voltages around the loop, okay, is equal to, well, let's see. So in other words, I'm going to add all my circuit elements around any loop and calculate the voltages on. All right. What's the easiest way to get from point C to point D? Somebody mumbled it. What did you mumble? By not what? By not moving. That's the easiest way to get there. Right? I don't move. But if I don't move, what's the voltage difference? Nothing. Zero. So whether I go all the way around this loop or just sit there, my voltage difference has to be zero. So whatever voltage I gain, I have to lose. Come back to zero at the end. These are our loop equations. This is the principle of Kirchhoff's loops because we draw a loop and we talk about the voltages on that loop. All right, so 
Well, let's see how we gain or lose voltage going around the loop. Going around the loop. All right, here we go. We have to look at the circuit element. If I have an EMF, so here's my EMF. We start out with this. It depends on how you're moving around your loop. I could have chose to go on counterclockwise around this loop. There's another choice that you have when you do this. I could choose to go around this loop clockwise. I could choose to go around this loop counterclockwise. I could have started at a different place. As long as you're consistent, it works out. As long as you're consistent, it works out. So it depends on how our loop is going. Let's say that our loop is going from the minus side of the battery to the positive side of the battery. So are we gaining voltage or losing it? Okay, somebody, not in the first three rows. I always hear from you guys. I gotta hear from these guys back here. Come on guys. What are we doing? We're losing. Okay, we're going from negative to positive. You're gaining. You're going from negative to positive. If I go from a negative number to a positive number, I'm gaining. Okay? Go so from a negative side of the battery to a positive side of the battery, I'm gaining voltage. And so how much voltage do you gain? Whatever the voltage of the battery is. That's how much you gain. Whatever the voltage of the battery. So you just add whatever the EMF is. That's what you do. So if your loop is going from the negative side to the positive side of the battery, you add that particular voltage, whatever that voltage is. Okay? All right, how about this? What if we happen to draw the loop the other way, or the battery happened to be pointed the other way? Okay? If my loop is going from the positive side to the negative side, what do I do? Subtract. I subtract. Sorry. And what do I subtract? Yeah. Minus B. What am I going to draw here? E. e. Okay? Fancy curly Q E. By the way, fancy curly Q E's are not the same thing as the regular E. A regular capital letter E would stand for what? Electric, Electric field. field. This curly Q E isn't even, uh, you know, it's not an electric field, it's an EMF, which is a what? EMF is the same as a voltage. voltage. Okay, so this is your voltage. Okay. Alright, so there we go. So now we learn how to deal with that. Okay? Other thing to deal with. Other circuit elements are resistors. And I draw a loop. about resistors is that there's, there, I mean, in principle, the resistor itself is a symmetrical thing. Okay. So when examining a resistor in your loop equations, you also must examine the current that's flowing through it. The current that's flowing through. So let us say that we've got a current flowing this way, current flowing that way. Now we're looking at our loop. We're looking at the loop and we're, we're trying to figure out, okay, are we going up or down in voltage? The river analogy works wonderful here. If you're going with the current, you're in a boat, you're going with the current, are you going up or down? You're going down. So you're going with the current. So if the loop is with the current, so you have to look at which direction you've drawn the current. You have to look at which direction is on current, which, an, which is another, which is the, where the consistency comes in. In other words, I don't care which way you draw the current, but every time you hit a resistor, you better use whatever current you drew. 
okay? So the loop has to go with the current. When it does that, you're losing voltage. So you subtract off the voltage across this resistor. Now what is that voltage? No, it's not E. Resistors don't have E. It's I times R. How do you get that? Ohm's equation. Ohm's law. Okay. Ohm's law. So we're subtracting off I times R. That's what you do. Let us say that our loop is going against the current. We could have used the same thing to flip the loop, right? Yes. Or would it have to be the current? After well, you just off? have to pay attention to what direction your loop is going and what direction the current is flowing through that resistor. Well, would so it be the current is placed like after R? That will work. No, it doesn't matter where the current is placed, it matters what direction the current is flowing okay. in. So if my loop is going in the same direction as that current arrow, then I subtract it off. If my loop is going against the current flow, then I do what? Add. Add it, and how much do I have? Same. Okay. Put a gag order on this guy. Give him away all the answers. So now, let's take these two principles here and set up equations for this loop. We've already done the, we've already done the junction equation. Let's do the other two. I'm going to use the left loop here. I'm going to use the left loop here. And so here's how you do it. So and I'm going to make a note that this is the left loop. Left loop. All right. So I'm going to start at point C. I get to this thing. What is it? OK, nobody in the first one, two, three, four rows answer this question. I'm talking to everybody back there. What is that? Starts with a B. Yeah, it's a battery. That's an EMF. You got a voltage. OK? Which way am I going? From negative to positive, so I add 5. So I add 5 volts. So I'm going to plus 5 volts here. And I'm going to keep my units. It's going to be messy. Usually when I work through problems, I will suppress them when I'm writing them down. But for now, I'm going to keep them. So plus 5 volts. That's what, that's what I'm going to do. All right? All right, so here I go. Doo -doo -doo, round the loop. Ah, I run to something else. What is that? It's futile. What is it? It's a resistor, and resistance is futile. So, okay. Am I going with the current or against it? I'm going with it, therefore I subtract. Now, here's the key about the resistors. You must subtract off that current that's going through it and that resistor. So it has to be this particular current. Okay, so it's the current that's going through it. One multiplied by two ohms, and you must include both here. Don't just put it has to be both because it's a voltage you're talking about. Okay. All right, so then we get to this one right here. Going through here. What is that? It's a resistor. Am I going with or against that current that's in there? I'm going with it. So I subtract. Subtract that current. Which one is that current? I2. Multiply by 4 ohms. I get back to the beginning, which means I finish off my equation by doing what? It needs to be an equation. Equals zero. 
Here we go. Now I need one more loop. You need as many loops to include, you, you need your loops to include all places in the circuit, okay? So I've taken care of this place here. I haven't taken care of this one. Now since I just say you use any loop, any loop here, um, I'm gonna use the harder of the loops to see, or I could go around any direction. If I were doing this in practice, since I kind of like my currents to all subtract off each other, blah, blah, blah. The easiest one for me to see conceptually would be left, right loop starting uh, behind the battery, because I always like to start behind the batteries, that's just me, and going counterclockwise. Okay. That's what I'm going to have you do on your own. We're going to do together, because so I can show you some stuff, okay? It works, because it doesn't always work out that the currents work out nicely like this, okay? I'm going to do the perimeter because it's also a loop. I can loop around the whole perimeter of this thing. I don't want to draw it on here because it's going to mess up everything. It's going to mess up the things. But I'm going around the whole perimeter. Okay, I'm going around this outside. And that will give me an equation that includes this part of the circuit. All right, so I'm going to start from, I'm so, so I'm going to go from C to D except for I'm going to go around the outside. All right, so what's this? It's a battery. Okay, so when I say what is it, I mean, what is it? So this is what this is the little steps that should be going through your head. What is it? Battery. Am I going up or down? Up. What do I do? Add. Those three steps should be going through your head. What is it? Resistor. Going with or against current? With. Therefore, I track minus. I1, who wants? What is it? I'm going around the outside now. What is that? Resistor. Resistor. With or against? Against, so I add. Against. Therefore, I add. add. Which current? I3. I3. Someone's going through there. Multiplying by 3 ohms. Come around here, what is it? Battery. Battery. Which way am I going? Against current. Positive to negative, therefore I subtract. subtract. Let's put the 10 volts in parentheses here. By the way, the reason why I'm putting these 10 volts and stuff in parentheses is because it's at this point where the V's in the, in the problem might get mixed up with V the variable. That's why I'm putting all my nice stuff in parentheses when I write this down. Okay? In fact, I should write that in black. Back in black. My son likes that song. I can't stand it, but now it's in my mind. I'm sorry. All right, so we get down here. We're going this way. What is it? Resistor. Resistor. Okay, am I going with or against the current? Against. Yes. I'm going against it. But if you can't see that, if you can't see that, it's perfectly fine to say, okay, there's I3 is going through here, right? I showed you I3 up here, just to say, oh, okay, well, this must be I3 down here, and actually draw it. It's okay, you can draw. Just make sure you label it the same thing you did up there, because the two curves are the same. But if it helps you, do it. Helps you, do it. Don't be prideful. Don't be prideful here. If it helps you, do it. Okay, I3. Remind myself that this is the same current as up here, and it's going in the same sense. Okay, so I'm going against that current when I come back around here. So I need to add I3 multiplied by what? Five ohms. I get back to the beginning. Because I go over here. Zero. Zero. At this point, I'm going to clean these two equations up a little bit and suppress my units. But do you know at least how to get this far? Okay, get this far. 
Can you explain the zero? The equals zero? Yeah. Because that's the other way to get from point C to D. So it's always? It's always equal zero. You go around a loop, it's equal to zero. That's the principle. The sum of the voltages around the loop equals zero. So this is another equation. So even on the right side? It doesn't matter which side, as long as you go around the loop. Oh, okay. I can pick any point to start with. If I go around and I end at that same point, zero. Or I could really get fancy. I could go point B here, I could go this, and then do like a figure A, and if I go back to point B, all my voltages are zero. Okay? It's silly to do that, but I could if I wanted to. All right, so. So let me clean this up a little bit. So I've got five minus, and I'll, ha I'll have the variables here. So this is two I1. minus 4 I2 equals 0. Okay, we could do a couple things here. I've got a 5 and a negative 10, so I can directly add those. Okay, so that would give you what? Negative 5. I got, uh, this is the only I1 thing, so I got minus 2i1, whoops, I'm going to put that in there. All right, I need orange. And I have 3 ohms and 5 ohms times i3, so what does that give me? 8 ohms times i3, or 8i3. So 8i3, so we've got plus 8i3. Equals 0. And let me rewrite this one. In fact, I could, you know, there's several different ways I could do this. Like I'll just I'll just write it down as it is. I1 plus I3 equals I2. I am not going any farther with this particular problem, as you probably could tell why. What is this? It's three equations with three unknowns. Three unknowns. It's three equations and three unknowns. When you're solving for the currents, that's what you get. Three equations, three unknowns. Some think sometimes it's Sometimes they make it simpler than others. Sometimes you're looking for a voltage and not a current. Uh, sometimes they give you one of the currents. Anytime they do that, they're just trying to make the algebra simpler. Okay? But in general, this is what you get. You get three equations, three unknowns, and you solve for the three currents. You'd solve for the three currents. And you let the algebra take care of this. You let the algebra take care of this. Now, let me go back up to the, all those choices that I told you guys about. Okay. What if it just so happened that the current was flowing back into the 5 volt battery? In other words, if this voltage is high enough, that's what would happen. In other words, this is going to push current so hard it would go back through this 5 volt battery. It would go back through there. Would I then be wrong? Would I have to rework the problem? You would If, let's say, let's say that somehow, I don't know what this problem's answers are, I have no clue, okay? But let's say that I had goofed up here and chose I1 in the wrong direction, okay? What if I chose it, it doesn't flow this way, it flows that way. How would I end up knowing that? It wouldn't equal zero. No, I1's not supposed to equal zero. I1's oh, supposed to equal zero. You don't have to throw anything away. Your algebra would just simply give you a negative value for I1. You let the algebra take care of it. As long as you're consistent, it's fine. Your answer for I1 would simply turn out to be a negative number. And then you'd know, oh, okay. That current's actually flowing the other way. That's it. 
So here, consistency is the key, which is why on a quiz or a test or whatever, I'll tell you the loops and I will tell you the currents to use. Okay? I want you to do that because it just makes it easier for me to grade. If I'm trying to figure out what the, if I tell you which loops to use, then I know what to look for. If I don't, I mean, I'm going to have some people picking. Because you can, by the way, pick this right loop. You could use the right loop. You do not have to use the perimeter like I did. Uh, the thing is, if you do use the right loop, what you will find it is a simple algebraic combination of those two equations. That's what you'd find out. So you don't gain anything by using the right loop once you've used the perimeter. So you have to use, it's an either or thing. <coughs> it's an either or thing. So there's choices all around. Okay? There's choices all around. I say when you're working your homework and you're working your, if I were working like a test and I were you guys, I will, I won't make you do, you know, I will try to make you do logical. You know. Yes, go ahead. Uh, so let's say I want to go in the other direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does that mean that I two is equal I two? No. No, because if I one's going in the other direction, I one's going to be a negative, right? And so this equation will still work with I one a negative value. As long as you're consistent. See, this equation, has it. as long as you're consistent with these equations, as long as you're consistent with the voltages, whether you're going up or down through those resistors, as long as you're consistent with this junction equation, it's fine. Don't worry about choosing the wrong direction for your current. Don't worry about it. Let the algebra take care of that. That's what messy algebra is for, and calculators that have graphical capabilities that can solve three equations and three unknowns without you have to do it yourself. If anybody has any of those, did you actually go through and figure out what this is, those three currents? Yes? I did it by hand. But, uh, oh, wow. And I did, the, I did the right loop. Okay, you did the right loop. Okay. And it doesn't matter if you did the right loop. It's just what, what are the numbers for these currents here? I1 is 514. 514s? Oh, it even gives you algebraic and things. I2 is 1514. And I3 is 57. I'll do it like that. <coughs> Aha, that's positive. I chose the right direction. Okay? But it wouldn't matter. But I'm going to say tell you this, it just wouldn't matter. Okay? You guys understand that, please. It doesn't matter. Don't, don't get hung up on that. Okay? Let the algebra take care of it. Trust the algebra. By the way, I don't give, when I give these on a test or a quiz, I also give you ones where you don't actually have to solve for three equations, three and ones like this, though there are some on the homework, okay? The reason why I don't is because you only have a couple and I don't want you trick. I don't want you spending 20 minutes doing, you know, doing this type of thing. But what I want you to be able to do, definitely, set this up, be able to do that, be able to get those three, be able to get those junction equations and those loopy equations, junction and loop. So that's how you do it. Thanks for the loop. Oh my goodness, wow. of fun circuits, right? So we have we have ones where we have the even and capacitors in them, we have the capacitors in series and parallel. We got resistors, we got resistors in series and parallel. And by the way, while you could work a resistor series parallel circuit with Kirchhoff's loop laws, I really would not recommend it because the equivalent resistance is much simpler to understand. So when do I use Kirchhoff's loop laws as opposed to equivalent resistors? When can I use equivalent resistance? What's when I have one what? Battery. battery. One battery, equivalent resistance. Two or more batteries, you must go to the Kirchhoff sloop law. Let's go. All right, so let's see. OK, well, that's great. We can analyze any circle we want to now. So I've got an EMF here. So here we go, EMF. Uh, this time I'm going to put a switch. I'm going to switch right here. 
All right, here we go. And I have resistor. Da, 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 da. Oh, this is going to be fun, fun, fun. Resistor. Here's a switch. Yeah. Yes, but yeah, they could. Yeah, you could do that, but I'm. Don't worry about that. Just, I wouldn't do that to you because that's like being tricky. I don't like being tricky. Okay. This class is hard enough without me being tricky. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. What is this? This is a switch. Oh, if I can throw this thing. What's the five? That's, 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 that's a switch. That's an S. This is a switch. That's a switch. So I got an EMF and I got this. And I throw the switch at t equals zero. And I wonder uh, what happens. What happens in this case? I, if I throw the switch at t equals zero and I close the switch, what happens here? Current starts to flow. I complete the circuit and current flows. Takes a little bit of time for the charge to build up. Takes a bit of time to the charge. And what's it? Uh, okay. Well, this is the one kind of circuit we haven't done. This is the one thing we have not done. And then we had all these resistors here, right? Yeah, the capacitors over here. Then we did the Kirchhoff's law, and we did the Boswell batteries. We have not yet put the resistor and the capacitor in the same circuit. And now I've just done that. Okay? Just done it. Okay. There was a homework problem. Almost a homework problem. Almost. The principle, there is a principle that you did need for that, and I'm surprised nobody asked me about it um, at, the, at the lab or on the board or anything. So nobody got into. But that a full capacitor, when the capacitor is when the capacitor is full, no current will flow because the capacitor is full. A charge capacitor allows no current flow. Have we seen that? A charge capacitor, no current flow because it's charge. Current flow. But now we'll talk about how this charges. That has to be for the next day. So this has to be on Wednesday. So this is what we're going to take over on Wednesday. Because I'm, I'm out of time. I can't leave it so late. From I when I started recording up till now, it's 120 up your, gigs. Uh, first you test. Press it too. Yeah, okay. I haven't been. Yeah. If I blot your name, just please bear with me, and please try to keep your voices down until I'm finished calling everybody. Like I said, I don't know where the microphone is, so I have no means by which to. Darn. I was hoping. No means by which to project my voice other than the natural loudness which I normally am. Like somebody would steal it, but they did. All right, Anthony Rossi. Uh, Kahar. Kahar Garoff. Uh, Benny. I can't read the last name, but Benny. Uh, Lakshan. Chris. Angel Hernandez. Hunter. Cake. Is that how you pronounce this? Emma. Emma Fuku. Leon. Levon. 
Brendan. William, Kim, Caroline, Gonzalez, Christian, Gil, Gil Martin, Christian, I think it's a name. Are you Christian? Huh? Okay. Jose, Jefferson. Fatima, Ryan, Alan, uh, Mikhail, Arian, or Arian, Ryan, Oh, there's two. Okay. You're Ryan? No, good. You're Ryan? No, oh, Ryan. Oh, Ryan. Okay. Oh, Ryan. Oh, thank God. I'm not a retailer. Uh, oh, Miranda. <laughs> Miranda, oh, yes, it is. Ryan, are you guys. Okay. Is there a Ryan? Is Ryan here? No. Okay. Matthew. Let's. Let's. Ledesma? Ledesma? Matthew? Matthew's not here. Okay. Hovanus. Hovanus. Uh, I cannot say the last name. If you start to say it. Oh, you can't type stuff. No. Privacy issues. Kevin. That's why I do this this way. Otherwise, in that, I just throw them out there and let you pick them up. It's just one of those, you know. Now, if, you, if he has a signed, written letter, that gives you permission sure. to, to... What about a text? Pick it up. No, not a text. Okay. Er, Erwin? I, I can have him sign it and just send it to me. Erwin, uh, okay. uh, Hugh? Is it when? Nugent? Hugh? H-I-E-U? Okay. So this is Brian or Brian or Ortiz? Okay, there you are. All right. Uh, Gabriella Hernandez. Ali, Ray Lynn, Stephen, uh, Miss O'Brien, Sergio, Ledesma, Eric Hernandez, Wong, Juan, still don't know how to pronounce the second name, but your last name is Kim. How do I pronounce the second name? Or is that you? No, you're just standing up. You're tricking me. Okay. Uh, Giov Giovanni? Is that even, was that right? Yeah, Giovanni. What's your last name? Okay. Tom, England? Uh, Brianna Beasley? Giovanni Alonzo? Eric Bravo, Frank, Adelia, Adelia, okay. Uh, Fat, Wong, Paul Archer. <laughs> Jack Duffet? Arthur Chu. Hemp Arts. Are you your Hemp Arts? What did you do for the last one? Brett? That's what I was doing. Because you're supposed to do this for Okay, send it to my email. Send it to my email. Wait, actually, why? I didn't use that. Give me four points. Go ahead, sit down. I'm passing this. Brett Del Mundo. Brett. Nicholas Curry. Or Curie. 
Stacy Coria. Francisco Gomez. Grant. Yeah. That's a, that's a cool name. I just, I wish it kind of uh, Franklin, don't think. Tweedo. Or is it Tweedo? This one? Tweedo. Somehow I got it. Joseph. Shh. Guys, keep your name down. Bed, bed. Uh, Gabri Gabriella Castillo. <laughs> oh, you bitch. I mean, <laughs> it's not nice. It's way uh, Mina Gunley. Gun Gunley? Mina Gunley? Art Grootman. Byron Aquino. Jose Guzman? Jiao Song. Okay. Timothy Chu. Cho. Timothy Cho. Abdul Rahman. Ab Syed. Adil. Talal. Alumi. Alec. Zimmer. Please forgive me for messing up all these names. I'm struggling because of not only the pronunciations, but the writing too, since you guys are handwriting your names. Rashid. Craig Stevens. Gerardo. Rodriguez. Tun Trin. Same thing. Yeah. Twenty-six. Yeah. Is that even close to being right? Wow. Okay. David Sanford. David. Oh, there you are. Where's your son? I'm sorry. That's great. Thank you. Azim. Syed Sai. Uh, nice guys, keep it. I know you're all excited. Uh, Jonathan. Uh, starts with a W and it's really long. Uh, with, with, is, uh, is there another Jonathan in here? Before I, okay, I'm gonna botch the last name. Wichisuria. Okay, not here. Okay. Tyler Walters. Tyler Walters. Jonathan Williams. Anthony Sanchez. Garrett. It looks like Rob Robinson or Robertson, but I can't read the last name. So is there Garrett around here? Carlos Torres. Lenny Paz, Bryce Ruder, where's it right? It is Ruder. Leonardo Torres, Sam. Okay. Randy Zamora. Umu. Uh, 